Hi, thanks so much for tuning in. You're watching BQ Prime. My name is Alex Matthew. And we're in conversation with the management of Delta uh, Corp. It's uh, the results that we're speaking about and hopefully more. Uh, the PAC number has come in at a 19% rise over the same quarter last year and strong growth seemingly uh, coming from the casino business. But we'll get more details on that. We've got Mr. Hardik Debar, who is joining in, the group CFO of the company. Hardik, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, and before we get into certain material developments from a couple of weeks back, let's talk about the numbers for the quarter gone by. Uh, am I right in my uh, assumption that this is driven primarily by the casino business, strength that you're witnessing there? And what are the key highlights according to you? Yeah, hi, good afternoon, Alex. Thanks for uh, getting this conversation going. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the the growth or uh, the number resist, uh, resilience that you are seeing is obviously coming in from the casino uh, gaming industry. Uh, it is the lion's share of the business of Delta. Uh, close to about 85, 87% of my business comes from the offline casino business. Uh, and yeah, that is the business that has done exceedingly well. Uh, last year was a record year. We crossed a thousand crores in turnover and uh, achieved a lot of uh, milestones during the year. And we've continued that momentum into this first quarter of this financial year as well. What is driving this growth obviously is one, the destination Goa is uh, a preferred destination liked after by all Indians, uh, likewise across the country. And you have a lot of people flocking to Goa and it's now a 12 month year round destination. It is no longer a seasonal destination as, is, as it used to be a few years ago, uh, which is obviously uh, driving a lot of traffic. And once you, once you have the traffic coming into the state, obviously the benefits of that accrue to uh, industries uh, like ours where uh, you know we are in now it's become mandatory for everybody coming to goa to visit a casino uh, once during the stay at least and that that is what has changed over the last uh, few years since the industry came in hmm. and obviously with that uh, you have the uh, lot of infrastructure development that is happening around goa in goa whether it is the new airport that's coming up right. the new expressway in maharashtra and the internal connectivity uh, uh, within Goa. Right. And like I have said on multiple occasions, the gaming industry has a lot to contribute when it comes to the overall development, well-being. Well, certainly, and, I take that uh, point. I take that point entirely. But let's talk about... Now, so you pointed out that the volumes or the footfall have gone up. Uh, and that is, I think, visible for everyone to see. But the latest development might just put, put a spoke in the wheel, right? Uh, and we must address the elephant in the room in terms of that flat rate of 28% uh, that is uh, going to be uh, affecting both the casino business as well as the online gaming business. Uh, do you anticipate that will affect footfalls? So Alex, that is the reason why I ended my previous answer with a statement of contribution to the exchequer of Goa. And that becomes very important from the larger perspective and where I come to that. With regards to the 28%, let me just what, clarify one thing. Mm -hmm that on the offline casino gaming business, the rate of GST has always been 28% since the time uh, GST was introduced uh, in 2017. Uh, and like I said, bulk of the business as far as Delta is concerned comes from the offline, uh, the casino gaming business. Yes, the change of rate is as far as the online gaming business is concerned, where it was an at 18%, but is now proposed to go uh, to 28%. Now let's look at the uh, methodology that is being, uh, you know, kind of recommended or proposed. A couple of things which I would like to uh, say there uh, is one that, you know, these methodologies are untested, unproven, and not something that is generally accepted or a practice that prevails in the industry, whether be it India or the globe, uh, the world across. Uh, let's talk of India first, uh, you know, or we have the casino business uh, running in India since 1995 mm. and the casino business had various taxes that were applied by the state government and the methodology of computation of these taxes was on the basis of uh, you know the gross gaming revenue uh, which is the worldwide accepted practice as well across you know 30 to 35 countries which have casinos and GST much before India had both these activities. 
so right up to 2017, which was the pre-GST era, the casino industry in, in India was paying a tax under the head of entertainment tax, stroke service tax, and it was paying on a certain formula. Come July 17, this tax got subsumed uh, into GST. And uh, as per law and as per the GST, uh, cardinal principles as they call it, uh, you know, the, the mere subsumption of a tax into GST does not or cannot warrant a change in methodology of computation. Mm. It can change the rate, keeping in mind the tax neutrality from the SSE perspective. Mm. Uh, you know, we were at 14, 15 percent, we've gone to 28 percent, but we have never objected to it or we have never made that an issue. But I think what is what is uh, now being recommended is a practice which is, like I said, untested, unproven and not practiced anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, we've made our representations. Yeah, uh, I was coming to that. Just, made... just before we get to that, Hadeep, because I want to understand how this works. Um, I, I haven't had the pleasure of going to a casino. Maybe I will at some point. But uh, so that my viewers can all understand this, I walk into a casino uh, and this is as per it, the proposed change, right? I walk into a casino and buy 100 rupees worth of chips. Um, and if I am to pay 100 rupees, I essentially at that point, you will deduct 28 rupees for tax and give me the remainder, right? So that's how it works, 72 rupees of uh, chips. So, so Alex, on plain reading what you're saying seems to be the case. Mm -hmm. Having said that, let us first understand that whether GST can be actually levied at this stage or no. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that is required to be done? There has to be a transaction. Assuming that you are considering this activity as a sale of good, then a transaction has to take place. What is happening in the example that you just explained is a mere exchange of currency for chips. It is not a transaction. I am not recording a sale in the books as far as the uh, company is concerned. So it is not a transaction. So therefore, if it is not a transaction, then even if it is a good, can the GST be levied? Secondly, assume for a minute that it is a good, then you have only spoken about the first part. The later part is you complete the activity of gaming and you come back and return the chips to me. Mm. At that stage, by law, mm. the GST also has to go back to you. Mm. So that clarity doesn't exist at this point of time. There is no fine print or there is no, uh, you know, laid out uh, notification Honestly, regulation yeah. to say that is, that is one part. Now, if somebody says, no, this is not a good, this is a service. Mm. Now, if it is a service, at the stage of you coming with 100 rupees and I giving you a chip, have I provided you any service? The answer is no. I have merely exchanged your currency into a currency which you can use on the floor of my casino. Mm. So there is no service that I have provided. Mm. The real service provision for the casino will start when you start using that chip and finally come back to me to return whatever either you have won or whatever is remaining with you, and I give you back your currency, equivalent of the chip that you had exchanged at the beginning. Right. So it is at this stage that the, the incidence of service actually crystallizes. Yes. So in either of the cases, even if you consider it a good, what happens to the goods return? And in case of service, the incidence of service only concludes, and my consideration for that incidence of service only happens when the chip finally comes back and you exchange it back for currency. Okay, so I, then take that point. Tech... I take that point. Uh, and while we wait for clarity, I guess we have to base this on hypothesis. So if things go as planned and there is, I have bought chips, that is not service. But I have, suppose I have taken, uh, I've given you 100 rupees. I have gotten 100 rupees worth of chips. I have gone and spent... 80 rupees of that, okay, and I have come back to you and I have taken the change. Now, 20 rupees is given back to me. I would have to essentially give you a tax on that 80 rupees. So, what you're essentially saying is that if I consume the entire amount, if I con consume the entire amount, I would have to stump up additional funds when I give, come back to you, right, at the exit. If, That's consume, not the case. if you don't collect at the start, and and if I come back and if I consume the entire amount, I would have to give you twenty eight rupees over that. If you collect at the second only, second. what happens is if you've lost eighty rupees yeah. and you're coming back with the, the income or the service.
charge that I have recovered from you essentially is 80 rupees and I would then compute 80 rupees per GST and that is the end of the story. So you are technically assume that I was going to levy it to you today. It is the casinos that you know absorb that cost. But for a minute even if I was to charge it onto you, you would only pay for the 80 and not on the yeah. 20 that you are taking back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was my point. Okay. So we've, we've established that there is need for clarification. Uh, you were making the point that representations are being made. Can you give us some clarity as to where this, what stage the conversations are at? So, so you know, representations are being made at various levels. Uh, there is a whole uh, online gaming industry vertical, which obviously we are a part of. Mm. Uh, we have not only made a representation to uh, the Ministry of Finance and the Revenue Secretary, but also returned to the Prime Minister's office as all the uh, founders and startups saying that, you know, this is like a hampering the digital India kind of uh, growth story that he has a vision for. Mm. That is one aspect. Uh, for the first time, you know, the, in, the foreign investors who have investments into these online gaming companies uh, have also made a representation to the relevant authorities saying that, you know, this seems to be irrational what you are planning to do and therefore please have a re -look at it. And the gaming companies and the others have gone and met the revenue secretary who in the recent statement have said that, you know, we'll have to go back to the law committee and the policy wing to ensure that we word it correctly and we come up with the right law. This is as far as the online is concerned. With regards to the offline or the casino business, there are two major states that get impacted, mm. which is Goa and Sikkim. And therefore, now my statement of the first answer that there's a huge contribution by the casino industry yes, yes. in the development and the infrastructure of the state comes into play here because us as the industry, not only directly but indirectly by virtue of promoting tourism, hotels, restaurants, bars, taxi drivers, etc., etc., have built up an entire economic ecosystem around this business, which contributes extremely uh, valuably to the exchequer of the state. And if this industry was to get hampered in any negative way, it's going to be a big bolt to the state. Okay. So the states in the cases of the casino in order to protect their own revenue streams and in order to protect their own exchequers are also making a representation to the ministry and to the revenue secretary and to the competent authorities saying that you know this needs to be relooked at because this is not what is the globally accepted practice and this is not a practice that we were following before the gst was introduced we have done this for last 20 years has been successful we have our revenues have grown and the states have benefited, so you need to consider this. So, okay, so I take it that representations are being made on both sides, and you pointed out both for the offline as well as on the online side. Uh, a couple of questions then. Uh, one, in anticipation of that clarity, you expect that footfalls at the casino will continue. You say that you were paying 28%, the modality of that is changing. Uh, and so, therefore, the lack of clarity, do you think that it will affect uh, uh, footfalls at all, or do you anticipate business as usual so as far as uh, you know the see first of all alex the law is yet to be implemented sure. whatever is being recommended is not yet become a law is not yet been notified yeah. so it is yet to be implemented so it is business as usual as far as we are concerned in the month of july sure. if i look at the month of july this decision or this recommendation came out somewhere on the 11th of july between 11th and today, there is about considerable two fort uh, a fortnight that has gone by. Yeah. And we haven't seen any decision as far as the current rate of footfall is concerned because as far as the customer is concerned or the business is concerned as it stands today, there has been no change. Okay. Going forward, I am very, very confident and hopeful given the kind of you know voices that are being raised and the representations that are being made. Uh, much before the notification or the, this, this recommendation becomes an act, we will have a solution which will be uh, acceptable both to the government, to the industry, and it will be a kind of a win-win situation which will emerge. No, and, that is uh, the hope. That is the hope, Hardik. But you to, that is the hope, certainly. And I hope that uh, uh, that all parties concerned get what they want and it's a win-win. But we have to talk about uh, things as they stand right now because I think your investors also would like to know what your game plan would be if things don't change. So let's talk about uh, your strategy. Assuming things don't change, will it affect plans that you have in place in terms of expansion of the online business in particular, where capital is being deployed, it is yet not making uh, profits. It, it was a loss-making entity in, in the quarter gone by as well. Now, so Alex, as far as online is concerned, it is very clear that the 
methodology that is being proposed is a methodology which is kind of a uh, doomsday scenario as far as the online is concerned and that is why you had the likes of Ashneer Grover and uh, every other big name in the online space coming out and talking at the top of the voice that this is killing the business, this is killing the industry. So uh, I, can, I would not want to paint any different picture. The fact of the matter is it's a scenario which the online industry may not be able to sustain and survive. Having said that, a couple of them may find ways to do it and they may survive, but I think it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult as far as the online space is concerned. Now let's flip to the casino business on the offline business. You know, we have been an industry which has been pruned and subjected to various hikes from time to time, be it our license fees or be it our entertainment tax, which was at one point of time 5% went all the way to 15% and then got subsumed into GST, we became 28%. And I think the uh, casino business has been very, very resilient enough to take a lot of things in its stride. Uh, by no means I'm trying to say that this uh, proposed formula is rational and acceptable or workable or logical but i'm saying eventually you know the business model will evolve and i don't think this is a, a doomsday scenario as it appears to be for the online for the uh, casino business for sure uh, but yeah we will definitely have to relook at uh, uh, a lot of uh, strategy and a lot of planning that we have had in place with regards to the online expansion and the ipo that was proposed obviously the ipo is currently on hold because no investor would like any sort of disclarity uh, before his or her investment decision. Okay, so I'm glad that you clarified that because that was going to be my next question, Hardik. Um, and it seems you're anticipating my questions as well. Uh, but uh, in terms of funding for now, you pointed out that no investor would like that level of uh, lack of clarity. But does that complicate the funding requirements for that business at all or do you have enough to keep that going as things stand so let me let me uh, tell you one thing you know the business when you look at the online business you have to segregate the businesses we we had two verticals even in the online business one was our poker business and the other was our multi gaming platform which we were developing and growing which was going to act as the funnel for acquisition and the whole strategy it works that was the business which was bleeding and which was losing money because that was in the growth stage and investment stage. Poker traditionally has been a very highly profitable business. It is a self-sustaining business. So for a minute, if I was to just turn the key off on my multi-gaming platform business, I will be able to come back to profitability uh, into the poker business over the next quarter or maybe two quarters uh, because uh, poker traditionally has been, uh, you know, when we took this company over in 2017, it used to do a 35% margin. Uh, of course, we went on a little bit of investments and growth strategy, but even then it makes anywhere between 18 to 22% margin uh, even today. It is on the consolidated online space uh, where you see the break even happening or a slight loss happening on account of the MGP platform is uh, because of its investments and uh, marketing and other growth strategies being employed. So uh, it, will, it, will, it will not be uh, you know, depreciative of any value or erodive, erotive of any value uh, as far as uh, the, the company is concerned. We, of course, the scale and the pace of growth that we had anticipated would not be the same, but we will still be profitable. Hardik, what about uh, if, and, and again, I'm hoping that uh, you and uh, all of the other parties involved find a solution that is workable, but if it doesn't, uh, and if you can't, Will you then uh, take the legal route? Legal option is always open and available and we believe that uh, a lot of things go in favor because, uh, you know, let's not get into that. Uh, what are the aspects that will be touched upon legally? But having said that, yeah, legal is an option which is always available with every uh, citizen of this country. And uh, I'm sure the online gaming industry is no different. Okay. Uh, so, yes. So, but then while that gets uh, clarified and while that solution gets found, uh, if there is implementation in the interim, uh, will that affect business? Uh, uh, and it can't be implemented because the act needs to be modified. The GST act for a modification needs to go to the parliament and needs a parliamentary nod. Post the parliamentary nod, it needs to go to various states because 
every state has to amend their respective GST act and give. So it's not a process that's going to get over in a jiffy. Sure. So, you know, till that all things and post that it has to go to the law minister, uh, law department and the policy wing of the GST to frame the rule, regulations, the methodology, etc. So it is going to take a, it some time. So till then, uh, it's not it's not happening tomorrow. So till then, it's business as usual. We hope. Till then, okay, you hope there's business as usual. Uh, my last question relates to something that I was reading. It was a notice uh, of Maharashtra looking to allow casinos to set up shop. Uh, is this something that you have uh, looked at as well? And would this be an opportunity that you would consider? Well, we uh, have always said that every location in India or in the Indian subcontinent, wherever there is an opportunity, we will be the first ones to knock at the door. Uh, so obviously, and uh, you know, a lot of states have flirted, a lot of states and union territories have flirted with the idea of opening up the casino. And uh, we have been the first point of contact for a few states and a few union territories as well. But uh, let's wait uh, if, if, if it all Anything positive was to come out on that front, obviously, we will be interested. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much, Hardik, for uh, and what ended up being a long conversation, but I think that clarification was due. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people watching this will get some element of clarity. And I'm hoping, hoping that we'll be able to touch base if at all some developments take place that we can talk about. We'll touch base when all the positive developments happen and we'll talk much more brighter and forward-looking. Absolutely. Hardik, thank you so much for taking the time. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex.